Hello YouTube, my name is Trey. Welcome to What Can I Change? Today we're going to be talking about some white police in Mississippi called the Goon Squad. Before we get going, if you want to like and subscribe if you see this video, cool. If you don't, cool. Uh, if you want to donate, um, we are trying to work ourselves towards a soundboard um, to help with the sound and everything. Just be able to uh, fix the voices and everything. So thank you for guys for your donations and we will continue to make this production better for you guys. Appreciate you. All right, so let's go ahead and hop right into the video. Hold oh, one second. DJ. Appreciate you. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and explain a little bit before I get this video going. Uh, one thing I want to say is that what ends up happening is there's a, this group of policemen, right? And they're called the Goon Squad in Rankin County, right, in Mississippi. So what they ended up doing is they broke into some people who are black house they broke into their house because they're not supposed to be in that city, right? Um, Rankin County wants to be an all-white city. And so what ends up happening is these policemen break in and they do the most torturous acts you could think of to these two black men. And these guys obviously are getting sentenced today. But as far as we know, the two of them are going for life and the others are going for a very long time. Uh, if you want to watch this, you can always check this out on Democracy Now! on YouTube and you see the whole, uh, the whole interview and everything. I just wanted to focus on what was done to these two black men. And let me know your feelings on it and your comments. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now forget waterboarding. Waterboarding was where the United States military was condemned for using these techniques at the Abu Ghraib prison in Iraq, in the Iraq war. The military denounced this. But in 2023, incredibly, in Rankin County, these deputies, uh, 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 Elwood, McAlpin, Detman, uh, uh, Updike, Middleton, Hartsfield, they actually waterboarded the two men you see now. They had them on their backs. They had them handcuffs. They had them intimidated, and they were pouring milk, liquids, and grease all over their faces in this insane interrogation and intimidation act. Then after they did all this, can you imagine law enforcement with dildos and sexual devices in their possession, attempting and putting it in the mouths? I hate to say this, that happened to the brothers, but we got to know their pain and suffering. To take a dildo and to shove it in the mouths of handcuffed and bound men and then and waterboard them like that on the ground and then hurl eggs at them and then make them strip naked in the shower to try to clean this mess up, strip these men naked in front of these criminals. You know, I, I, it, it, it just never fails to ignite my passion. And therefore, tactically and strategically, we are after ranking county and we won't let up. I want to end. So, once again, these individuals, I'm going to name them. Um, I got to pull it up right here. Name of these individuals. Because these men never need to work ever again. <clears throat> Christian Deadman, Hunter Elway, Brett McAlpin, Jeffrey Middleton, and Daniel Apakai, and Joshua Hart Hartfield, better known as the Goon Squad in Rankin County, did the most disgusting acts you could ever think to these two young men. One thing I didn't show you guys is what happened to the other young men. Uh, one, of, one of the young men that was in the in the, uh, we're going to, hold on a second. Let me make sure I get the name of the individuals. One of the individuals had a gun put in their mouth for an entire minute. Michael Jenkins and Ed, Ed, Eddie Parker. The gun was put into this young man's mouth for an entire minute, sat there, waited. And after an entire minute, the man pulled the trigger. It's just sad to even think about, man. Pulled the trigger, it lacerated the young man's tongue, and then the bullet went down his throat, came out his neck. The man survived. But the last man that they did this to passed away. And I want to tell you of another story. These same men saw a man 
the police get called on a young man. They said there's a burglary. They go get this young black man, and he's supposed to be put in the back of a, a car. The mom says goodbye to her son and says, hey, I'll see you tomorrow. Because she's thinking nothing of it, not knowing how psychopathic these, these young men are, these police officers. She goes to go say goodbye to her son. And as soon as she gets to the other side of the car, the patrol car, she sees her son on the ground, passed away. And not just passed away. He's not just gone. Not like he's just sitting there looking like a normal man who just lost his life. No, 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 no. His eyes were bulging out of his head. He had hemorrhaging because the cops put their knees on his back and knees on his neck so much that his eyes were bulging out. Blood coming out. That's how much pressure. Do you understand how much pressure you have to put on somebody's neck for their eyes to start bulging out? These men are ruthless. These men are disgusting. I know I talk a lot on here. And I am obviously, there's places that racism is, does exist. That's why I always say it does exist. I do think we push it too far by making everything racist when there are acts like this actually go on that you don't even know the story about. I have not seen this anywhere. I found this randomly because I've been trying to get more into the news. So obviously the algorithm is going to push more news to me. And I've been looking for more news for the our community. And this is one of the things that I saw. Watch the entire thing. So there is real racism out here, but we get so caught up in the small little things about somebody maybe not giving you a coffee and they spell your name wrong, and that's complete racism. We're gonna watch another, we're gonna see another video later where I give a great example of the craziness is when people say stuff about racism. No, Rankin County, Mississippi is a place I would say that's racist. When they're taking the young the lives of young men just because of the color of their skin, because you're supposed to live in Rankin County is for white people and Hyde County is for black people. That's racism. When you have to step on a man's neck until his eyes are bulging and he passes away and you feel that. When you have to take two young men and sexually assault them with toys, put guns in their mouth and shoot and pull the trigger. When you were, suppo you, you were supposed to try to take their lives, but uh, unfortunately for them, they survived. And now they went to court and now they're going to prison hopefully for the rest of their days and will never see another second out here. The deputy, the sheriff that saw all of this go down is still a sheriff and he should step down because he is part of these disgusting acts because this is not the first time these men have done something like this. What does it take for a man to hate somebody so much? And I, I told you guys sometimes that people hide behind racism. And I'm going to say that here. Do I think what these goon squad people did was racist? Obviously. But they're also psychopaths. They're also unstable. These men are, they find somebody they want to take the life of and have it justified. These young men chose a city where they knew they could be psychopaths and nobody would care. Because it takes a true psychopath to do what these men have done. To torture waterboard men just because of the color of their skin. That's not just hate people. That's mental illness psychopaths right there that would do something like that. People who are, they need, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pass off mental illness. Let me, let me take a step back. I'm not going to pass off mental illness. I'm going to say these men are psychopaths. They are criminals and they are murderers. Not, not, not every one of them did it. I'm talking about the two, the men who did take the lives of black men. But the men who sat there and watched it happen as well, made sure nobody knew it. They all tried to cover it up. Don't get it confused. That's true, true hate. Not for just blacks. That's a hate for the humankind, for human beings. Because we see it all the time from both sides these days. We saw that young white girl who got beat up, I believe, in Alabama or Chicago, who got beat up because of the color of her skin. That's true hate, people. True hate truly exists out here. True racism truly exists. But we spend so much of our time when somebody may say something to you, be like, hey, uh, could you please not do that? Oh, racist. No, you don't know. You don't know until you have to see the disgusting acts that happen to real people who really don't want you around. 
But people just want to feel so oppressed so bad. You want to feel, but people want to feel racism so bad. That's what's so crazy. They want it. They want it so bad. What do you think these young men felt when they were being tortured and waterboarded because of the color of their skin? Do you think these young men want to just go out and just, just make racism something to market? That you think they want to put on a t-shirt? You think they just want to be like, yeah, yeah, racist. The things that happen to them are going to scar them psychologically, probably for the rest of their days. That's racism, sir. So quit. I just can't stand how often people use racism as such a, as, as a word, as a something so simple. When there's real men out here, real women out here who are truly, truly experiencing the 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 true hate for the color of their skin so much that they wanted to take their lives and execute them, not just execute them, but torture them for hours. Maybe not hours, but an hour. They didn't give a time limit on how long the torture was. But that's true. But everybody wants to follow press. I say count your blessings. Because when true stuff comes around, when that real life comes around, when that real oppression comes around, It's not something that can be easily stomached. It's something that you can just walk through and go praise to your friends. I'm sorry for what happened to this uh, these two young men, Michael Jenkins and Eddie Parker. Justice should be served and it is being served. And for the men of the Goon Squad, may God help y'all.